What's up everybody, do right back at it again with another video on Ready or Not. Today we're gonna to be talking about an update that just came out a few seconds ago as of the recording of this video. For those of you that don't know, they are releasing bi-weekly updates and so far they seem to be consistent with them. But the one thing that they haven't really been consistent with is just giving actual playable updates. Cause as far as I can tell, my Ready or Not isn't updating in Steam. So yeah, we got an update, but it's not playable as far as I can tell. So let's go ahead and get into it. The name of this update is called Single Player Co-op Art, Flashlights, MVGs, and trails. It starts out with saying, we are hard at work here at Void Interactive, continuing to further polish and operate on the upcoming update for the Ready or Not Alpha on Steam. We know you're looking forward to playing it. I mean, I've been playing the Alpha all this time. I want the updates, damn it. And while we're just as eager to make it live, we also want to ensure it brings an endearing amount of both new content and fixes to present issues. So much so that our current internal change log is shaping up to be among the largest to date. Interesting. The primary changes and additions include the implementation of a reporting system to PvP gameplay, a revamped lobby area, upgraded flashlight and MVG gameplay, brand new first and third person animations for a plethora of different gear and player actions, multiple quality of life improvements, such as enabling the player to change their loadout for a period of time after they spawn, and many more, together with fixes to the community reported issues in regard to the VIP escort game mode, the medkit, the leaning system, and weapon balancing, just to name a few. Wow, that's a lot of freaking fixes that they're bringing. I don't know. I wasn't a fan of the VIP escort, but I don't know. People were saying that it's good, and I'm just like, eh, I didn't like it. But then again, I'm not someone who played a lot of Swap Force multiplayer, so maybe I'm just missing out. But anyways, let's move on here. This comes on top of all the other content we already presented in Volume 5. Oh, we're doing this in volumes now? What the hell? Such as the new system selection UI. The UI that they brought to the game is like a lot better than the previous one, but very, very basic. I hope they actually fix that. Because the straight looked like a patch job, which makes sense in my opinion. But anyways, the new shoot house level and the reworked training and the incorporation of doors. Gotta have doors. Which continues to be the subject of heavy in-house testing as we work to ensure they bring a tactically fun and engaging element to every match. And that is what seems to be coming in the next alpha update. It seems like it's a bunch of multiplayer stuff. Not too much for the co-op and single player it seems in this update just a bunch of mechanics really i'm not entirely sure if this is supposed to be an update for the alpha or if it's actually beta itself i think it might just be alpha but i could be wrong but anyways let's push on here the next thing they talk about here is the single player co-op level art and oh my god it's actually not meth this time jesus they start off with saying we waved meth goodbye oh finally after how many freaking updates on the previous update and we are happy to present new art for a familiar level that already made the stop on the ready or not alpha before hotel both the environment and the layout and overall level design of hotel have shifted directions since your last visit and we wanted to share some postcards of our progress as it nears stage one completion so i just want to say that uh hotel is a pretty big map like it's way bigger than myth there's just a bunch of places to explore in that map to be honest but for now this is all we got basically what's happening there they've said this in the past about hotel so if you guys don't remember then i'll tell you right here but basically what's happening is that there's two gangs that are actually fighting inside of hotel you got the mexican gang i forget what the name of them are and also the white supremacist gang that are there it's not really clear as to why they are actually fighting there but what is clear is why you're going in there obviously you're trying to stop those two gangs at the same time try to save as many people as possible but uh yeah so here's where they show off the first picture of hotel this reminds me a lot of that one hotel map from uh swap four which i'm sure that's where they got the idea and i really can't think of where this place could actually be i just imagine it being like in a basement area or something like again, this is the first time I'm actually looking at a detailed version of the map So I'm not entirely sure what this actually is and I'm not really allowed to say too much about this map Just about the stuff that's basically already public. So there's that underneath the picture It says the upper levels of hotel appear to be undergoing a remodeling process with multiple areas blocked off from public access However, this hardly stops the gang members who have taken over the hotel leading the conflict beyond the scaffolding Like I said before the two gangs that are there you could also see them in the trailers too looking at the next picture here this this looks like a waiting area, it seems, or like some sort of lounge or something. Underneath it, it says, despite the remodeling being done on the upper levels, the first floor of the hotel remains
remains as functional and as wonderful as ever. Its intricate and unique architecture and design shining bright. The lobby continues to receive new check-ins, or that was the case until recently. I wonder what happened. You know, somebody actually showed a picture of a real life hotel that looked exactly like this somewhere here in LA. Uh, from what I understand, some of the developers actually came to the States. Like if you don't know, the developers live in New Zealand, but they wanted to get a bunch of pictures from, uh, you know, here. And they actually went to a hotel that's somewhere in LA. I really don't remember, but I just remember seeing like the pictures almost look exactly like this model that you're seeing in front of you. And that's kind of cool. Looking at the next picture here, this looks like some sort of bar area. Uh, a lot of tables and stuff are flipped over. I have actually played in this version of the map along with the last picture that we saw. The first one that we saw, I think is actually the roof area, but I could be wrong. Um, they did say upper level, so I'm assuming. But uh, yeah, anyways, no magnificent downtown hotel would be complete without a vast, welcoming, luxurious bar area for its guests to visit. The lavish yet moderate interior design engulfs the regulars while they order drink after drink. Now, however, a different sort of heat has taken over. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I've been in this area. This area is pretty much textured all the way through, I think. I don't see anything too different, aside from... I'm not really sure if that top part was always green, though. I think it was white before, but I don't, know. I don't remember. It's been a bit since I played it. But yeah, pushing on. The next picture looks like a kitchen of some sort. I don't remember this part exactly all that well. I think I've actually played in this area, but I don't remember. But the description here says, A hotel with such a size and scope presents the need for services that are up to standards. Multiple service rooms are distributed across the building's layout usually frequented by hotels employees to move around yeah now that i think about it i think i remember like there's like two shut doors behind this picture i think like for you to walk in and then you can walk over there to like the lounge area it's been a while since i played on this map because you know i played it so much that i'm just kind of like you know waiting for those updates right but uh yeah seems pretty cool i like the textures here let's push on to the next thing the next thing we got here is flashlights mbgs and trails besides doors we have also been focusing on another particular gameplay factor we want to begin encouraging more the usage of flashlights mvgs and glow sticks when engaging in dark environments we see great potential in refreshing gripping gameplay that emphasizes the use of the equipment to create different tactical opportunities and we are working to create systems that feel fun to play and open to tactical and cooperative approach okay i think my biggest issue with the flashlight is just how like tiny like the little white light is like i feel like it barely covers anything night vision goggles sometimes wouldn't work in the dark but that was like towards the beginning like after the recent update it's gotten a lot better than it was previously glow sticks i rarely use those like the only time i would ever use those is in a co-op and all i've really been playing recently is just nothing but uh you know multiplayer which it's really pointless to have in multiplayer to be honest but uh yeah as a part of this effort we made new upgrades to the mvgs of flashlight attachments and have been carefully designing darker variations for our levels where the use of said equipment becomes paramount. While we continue to tinker with the concept, internal testing has brought us amazing results. Uh, internal testing. Oh man, I wish I could have been a part of that. And we are thrilled with how unique of an experience we are capable of engineering with just a click of a switch, a flick of the wrist. On top of improving our MBGs and flashlights, we also have been refining the bullet trails that the weapons leave behind when they are fired so that they become another element of importance when it comes to the player and opponent. Awareness in obscure environments. This leads to an entirely different way for the player to be mindful of their enemy and maneuver across spaces. And then it shows the picture of the new MBGs, which look okay um i don't know it still looks ridiculously bright though like i can't even see what the hell he's looking i can't even see what he's shooting at to be honest i think my biggest issue is that it looks like there's a big like flashlight where the um middle of the screen is like i don't know if that's supposed to be natural with the uh nvgs or not but it's like i'm trying to see what he's shooting at and it just looks like he's firing you know blindly like i can't really tell if he's actually hitting it or not because he sees the guy obviously in the beginning here but then he fires and he's just firing and firing and firing and firing did he get him like i don't know did the guy back out and he's just wasting ammo like i don't know i'm not really a fan of like you know going in dark because anytime that i try to use mvgs it just never goes well for me generally i like to use flashlights which we'll get to that uh the flashlight gif in just a second but yeah, I, I don't know i just don't like mvgs as much as i used to in my opinion and uh yeah so let's push on to the next thing here the next one is called flashlights and i'm a bit confused here i think what's happening is that it's actually showing off the flashlights from 
from the other perspective. Like the guys on the other side are actually using the flashlights and this guy is not because he doesn't have any light emitting from his gun. So I'm not really sure why they decided to show this off. That's kind of weird. But I mean, I guess the effects of the light looking on the smoke looks pretty good, but I would really like to see what it actually looks like when you're using the flashlight, you know, outwards to see what that looks like. And uh, yeah, it's still ridiculously dark. And that's pretty much all I really got to say about that. I kind of wish that this would actually show like the perspective of the dude that's actually using his flashlight. Like, can he actually see this dude that, you know, we're, we're currently looking at? Like, does the flashlight actually work or does all that smoke cover it up? Because that's what it seems like to me. Like all the smoke from all the shrapnel flinging off and shit is not actually helping the person that's using the flashlight. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much the update here. Uh, it's just, a, you know, another relatively tiny update, but at least, you know, it showed off something new. It showed off the brand new map. They've shown off before in the past, but at least a more in-depth version of it. Like they're actually showing off more of it. Y you get what I'm saying, right? But yeah, that's pretty much the update. So I'm gonna end it here. If you enjoyed the fact that I cover games like Ready or Not, be sure to like the video, comment on the video and share it. If you're someone that's new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and ding the bell. If you're someone that would like to support the channel, check out my Patreon. Just send two bucks a month. And with that all being said, I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.